This tutorial will show you how to use the iMovie app for iPad testing, to create testing. a movie. I should begin by saying that none of the actors were harmed in the making of this movie, although their feelings might be hurt once they see this terrible production. But keep in mind, I'm using film that I actually captured with my iPad and using my iPad to make the final movie. Hopefully this will be something that you and your students can use in your classroom. I'm going to begin by launching the iMovie app from my iPad. If you can't find it or know where you put it, you can use the Spotlight Search to find it. When the app opens, I see several options, the first of which is a question mark. Clicking on the question mark in any screen will give you some help options that may help guide you through the process. Across the top, I see that I have Video, Projects, and Theater options. The Video option shows you all of the videos you have captured on your camera roll. The next option shows you any projects you have working on your device, whether you've published them or not. And finally, the theater option shows you things that you've published to the cloud. Back in the video section, clicking on any video will give me options like changing the speed, playing the video, or marking it as a favorite. Since I'm creating a new project, I'm going to go back to the projects option, click on the plus in the upper right hand corner, and in this case, create a movie. You'll find that there are several themes to choose from. Each theme has its own unique font, transitions, look, and theme music. For this project, I'm just going to go with simple. I click Create Movie, and my project is ready to go. When my project launches, I see several windows. The bottom is where I'll build my project. This is where I'm going to insert photo, videos, or audio to my project. When I click a video, its frame turns yellow. Tapping on the down arrow will insert the entire clip into my project. When I slide the entire frame back and watch it from the beginning, I can see that I pulled too much and I need to trim something out. There are a couple of ways to make this edit. I can slide the video back so that the white line matches up with the point that I need to trim it. Tapping on the inserted clip will turn it yellow and some menu options will appear at the bottom. One of these options is split. This will cut the clip in half, and then I can click on the trash can to delete the unwanted scene. Luckily, I had re-recorded a better version of Heather's interview. This time, however, I know that the part I want comes out of the middle of her clip, so I'm going to drag the yellow edges of Heather's clip so that it surrounds the part I want. When I've got the part captured, I just tap the down arrow and in it goes. For my next trick, I'm going to bring in an entire scene and then add a cutaway. This is useful when you have audio that you want to play, but you want video from another clip to appear while the audio is playing. To get this effect, drag the video so that the white line is hovering over the part where you want this effect to occur. Next, tap on the video that you want to cut in. When you tap on it, you see the three dots on the right side. Expanding this selection gives you several cutaway options. The first one is an actual cutaway. When you click on that cutaway option, the new video will go in on top of the previous selection. The default audio setting for the cut in selection is mute, so the audio from the original clip will play while the video from the newly added clip will show. Tapping on the video for the cut in selection, a menu will appear at the bottom for video and audio. I can turn the audio up on the newly created sound so that the sounds will play together, or I can turn it back down to mute. That video option down at the bottom allows me to change the way the cut-in appears. Clicking on the option beside the cut-in, I can make the video appear to be picture-in-picture. Picture. I can now move the embedded picture around on the screen. I can shrink it to be smaller. I can even make it look like it's on the screen of the other screen. This type of cutaway would be useful when you want to see the video from both selections. Now suppose I want to have this video, but I want to have different audio playing behind it. I'm going to drag the video so that the white line is in front of where I want the new audio to appear. I'm going to go to the selection of the clip that has the audio I want, and I'm going to click on the audio selection. This brings a blue bar down that has the audio waveforms that will indicate to me that the sound is there, but the video is not. This is great when I have an interview of someone and I want to have their audio playing while I perhaps have video footage showing of some work that students are doing. Now as long as that audio clip is blue, it indicates to me that I can move it around on my screen to play behind whatever scene of video that I want. What I actually want to be heard here though is a voice recording that I do myself. So instead of pulling audio from another clip, I'm going to record audio myself. 
The microphone in the bottom right hand corner allows me to record my own sound. As soon as I have stopped the recording, I get the options to retake, to listen to, or to accept the recording that I just made. If I don't like the way it sounds, I just click retake and it lets me record it again. When I finally come to terms with the fact that my voice sounds completely different outside my head as it does inside my head, I just hit accept. A blue bar will show up at the bottom with the waveform that indicates the volume and the duration of my recording. Tapping on the newly created audio piece brings up a new menu at the bottom that will allow me to adjust the volume, the speed, as well as if and how I want the clip to fade. Remember that my original clip did have its own volume. Tapping on that selection will bring up an audio menu for it as well. If I want to turn the sound way down or way up on that original clip, I can. I can also detach the audio so that I can adjust it, move it around to some other place in my film, or trash it altogether. Since I just detached the audio of my original video clip, now might be a good time to point out the undo button. Over on the right side of my screen, underneath my videos, but above my project, you see a little curved arrow? That means undo. You can push that button as many times as you need to to get back to the thing that you did before the thing that you did that you shouldn't have done. I want to go back to one of the other cutaway options, and that's going to be a picture beside a picture. I'm going to pull in a clip of Courtney Niemeyer when I pan over to Tiffany Hall. I want Courtney and Tiffany to be talking side by side instead of one after the other. To get this particular effect, I'm going to split the clip after the part where Courtney has finished talking. Then I'm going to use the trash can to delete the part where Tiffany's interview took place. If I look up at my video clips, an orange bar will indicate the part of that segment that I have used. I can now drag the yellow box around the part of Tiffany's interview that I want. I'm going to make sure the white line is at the front of Courtney's interview where I want Tiffany's part to be inserted and then I'm going to tap on the three dots and select the option that will allow me to put a picture beside a picture. Now when this segment of my project plays, Courtney's picture is to the left of Tiffany's picture. Now remember on the cutaway options it mutes the second or added part of the project. I can change this by tapping on whichever part of the video that I want to change. So if I want to unmute Tiffany's section I would tap on hers, go to audio and turn the sound up. Now in this case both Tiffany and Courtney will be speaking at the same time which might be just a little bit distracting. I know I'll deal with that later. What I notice most is that Tiffany's part is slightly shorter than Courtney's, so I want to align those. I'm going to take Tiffany's part and move it to the end of Courtney's, and then I'm going to trim Courtney's video by tapping on it, selecting video, and choosing split. I can then get rid of that extra little piece on the front of Courtney's interview. Let's say that I want to add something from my camera. I can launch my camera from the bottom and insert either video or photos right into my iMovie project. Remember I can add photos from the options at the top as well. I can add video, photos, or audio. In this case I'll go to photos, go to my camera roll, and choose a photo that I want to add to my project. It's important to note that the default settings for a photo are 4 seconds and to have the Ken Burns effect on. The Ken Burns effect is what allows the picture to look like it's moving or panning across the screen as the video plays. To adjust this effect you just click on where you want the picture to start and then tap where you want the picture to end and pinch to zoom in or out. This is hard to get used to but it's very useful when you want to draw attention to a specific part of a photograph. Now to change the duration of the effect or the length of the time that the photograph will appear on the screen you just drag the yellow bar back or forth until the timing is where you want it. If you have a drastic change on a Ken Burns effect going in or out, you might want to make the picture display for a longer amount of time. In this case, I felt that six seconds was long enough not to make the viewer sick. Now, if you don't want to mess with this part at all, the default Ken Burns effect is not bad. In this case, the Ken Burns effect is very subtle. It moves slowly from the bottom left to the top right, and four seconds seems just about right. Now to add some background music. If I go back up to the top where I could choose between video, photos, and audio, one of my audio options is to choose among a nice list of the theme music that's preset in iTunes. You can listen to them and when you find one that you want to use, just tap the down arrow and in it goes. 
The green color of this audio file indicates that it's playing subtly as background music behind all of the other audio that I have selected in my video. I can also tell by the height of the waveforms that the volume on this particular clip is rather loud. If there's an interview where someone is speaking, I'm afraid that the volume is going to overshadow the sound of the speaking. One way to adjust for this is to tap on the file and adjust the volume down. When you listen to it, and if that still doesn't seem like enough, you can tap on the file you want to be louder and adjust its volume up. Now maybe you don't want the music to play behind the entire video. In this case, when you tap on it, you can click on the three dots and move it to the foreground. It will turn blue, and this will indicate that you can move that file around anywhere else in your video. For my example, I only want this audio to play in the place where I have those two photographs. So I simply move the start of the file to the start of the photos, and that's where the music will begin to play. Now since that audio file was 58 seconds long, and I only have a 6 second plus a 4 second photograph, obviously my audio is going to be too long. I'm just going to trim that back so that it will be a better fit for the duration of my photos. I do that by just dragging the end of the file so that it matches up with the end of my pictures. I'm going to add in one more video clip just to finalize my project. So I click back on videos, go to the file I want, and insert it. In this particular scene, Brandon is discussing the pros and cons of project-based learning. He makes the point that project-based learning is based around collaboration, and in the background I notice that Russ is actually collaborating with a group of people at his table. When I tap on Brandon's video clip, I notice that the option is there for me to pinch to zoom in on a certain part of the video. What I want to see is Russell's collaboration. What I want to hear is Brandon's voice. Now you may have noticed that in between the clips is a little symbol with two triangles. This indicates the type of transition that's there. If I tap on the transition, a menu will appear with the other types of transitions I could choose between. As I get ready to finalize my project, I notice that that blue audio file where I had the music playing ends very abruptly when it goes into the scene with Brandon and Russ. In order to make that a smoother transition, I'm going to fade out the audio by selecting it, clicking on fade, and pulling the orange triangle back. That will make that transition out of the music and into Brandon's voice more subtle. Now it's time to add a little text to put on the finishing touches. When I go back to the beginning and I click on Chrissy's video segment, the menu option for title will appear at the bottom. Clicking on it allows me to choose from none, opening, middle, or ending. Since this is the first slide, I chose opening and I'm going to go in and call it What is Project-Based Learning? It's important to note that the text will appear over the entire segment you have selected. As soon as Chrissy's part is over and Heather's begins, the text now goes away. If I add a middle title to that scene where I had the picture in picture, the text will show over the duration of the entire segment. That will include the part where the picture appears within the picture. At the bottom right part of the screen, you'll see a box with a T. This is where you can choose the font or the theme of the text. At the very beginning of our project, when we chose the simple theme, it had a text that went with it. Each theme has its own unique text. This setting here, though, allows you to mix and match between the different fonts. Now because that last segment is so long, I don't want the font or the text to show over the duration of the entire thing. I'm going to split it about in half, and I'm only going to have the text appear over that last part. So now I'm ready to save. In the top left-hand corner where I see the arrow, I'm going to tap on that, which will take me back to where I can put the title, I can look at the duration, I can see the date it was created, I can play, I can save, I can trash it all together, or I can go back in and edit. Saving will allow me to publish my video either to my iTunes library, to Facebook, directly to YouTube, or to my camera roll. Hopefully your iPad iMovie project will turn out as awesome as this one, if not 200 times better. Thanks for playing along and enjoy your project. Inquiries on projects and collaboration. Testing, testing. Project-based learning, the next of that, I think, is messy, student-directed, super fun, and long life.
collaborating effectively without, you know, running into too many mishaps where you don't get any